This channel is made possible by viewers like you. My viewers, subscribers, and patrons greatly help to keep this channel going. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all of you. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you'll get access to what I'm working on, previews of upcoming content, and even early videos, along with other tier options for those that are interested. Thank you, and now on to the video. Atlas Fallen is a new action RPG from Deck 13 Studios. They have a background in making Souls-like titles. Atlas is a surprising turn for them. This is not a Souls game at all. It actually feels like it has a bit more influence from, say, the Darksiders games than anything from FromSoft. I am a fan of the Souls titles, but I do miss games like this. In other ways, Atlas Fallen is sort of more of a throwback action-adventure RPG. Maybe this was intentional, or just by how the game was developed, but it definitely reminds me of the fun games that were a decent length, providing good gameplay, and were maybe something I could return back to here and there. I have been playing the game before and up to the release, and based on the current set of scores that I am seeing, I want to hopefully shed some more light on this title, because whether you grab it now or wait for a sale later on, I think this is one worth checking out. At the heart of the game, and I think its big standout, is the combat. Again, this reminds me more of an action title than anything else, and in some ways it even has some influences from Amalur. For example, you can carry a primary and secondary weapon. Each one is tied to a button. What I like about this is how you can interchange them mid-combo, sort of allowing for more freeform as you are fighting enemies. You can start out with your whip, and then after a few hits, change to your axes, and then you can even perform different attacks if you hold down your attack button. Like the whip will pull you towards an enemy. Built within the combat is the momentum system. As you hit enemies, this bar will fill, allowing you to do more damage, but this also allows the enemy to do more damage to you as well. There is a good amount of room for personalization here. The bar is broken out into three parts. As you fill each section, you will also gain access to additional moves and buffs. The fun part is, is that as you are unlocking more, you are the one selecting which ones you want to have access to as the bars fill. So not only are you getting stronger as you hit enemies, but you are also gaining moves and buffs buffs that you chose to have. You can also opt to unleash all of your energy into a special hit. This will significantly hurt your foe and act as a good reset to the enemy so that they do less damage to you because your bar is now depleted. It is a fun system that has you considering a lot. Open world-wise, I really like it. It follows a familiar formula, but it is a space that I honestly do not want to leave. Part of this is because of the wide spaces you can traverse, and your means to do so is pretty cool. You can sand surf, and it's simple to do with the press of a button, and oddly always satisfying. It is a simple yet effective means to move around the map, to the point I found it relaxing to just surf around finding items to sell to the merchants. As far as the open world tasks are concerned, you have side missions, which are mostly just kill-type missions, finding chests for supplies, artifacts to sell, among other things. Yes, there is a bit of that been there, done that kind of feeling to the open world design, but again, it goes back to moving throughout that space. If it is fun to be within that open world, especially to move within it, that contributes to the engagement. Plus, there is a platforming element that uses a double jump and air dashes. This verticality is even used in some of the combat as well. I like how some of this is used for the action too. You might be fighting a larger beast or something snake-like with a long neck, or even fighting flying enemies and through your jumps, whip grapple, and air dash, you can effectively stay up there, bouncing around in the air between foes. Something else I forgot to mention before is that your main means to heal is by hitting enemies. This will build up your energy so that you can use a quick heal of sorts. There are a bunch of little elements that sort of all come together for the combat. It was easy to pick up, but to use them well, it took some time, which is partially why I really enjoyed just surfing around the rather large areas that you have access to early in the game. I used this time to try and improve myself at the game, and understand the systems better. And again, since both the combat and traversal are enjoyable, I found this to be a great way to get even more out of the experience. Now with there being a lot of combat, you're going to need to have a way to defend yourself. 
Here's where you have your evade that you can use to zip around opponents along with the parrying system. If you time the parry just when the enemy is about to hit you, then you'll sort of freeze them in place and you can pound on them for a few seconds. I honestly prefer a blocking system because I'm never good at these types of things. But in fairness, it is fun and satisfying to pull off. So how is this title when it comes to progression? So there's a few ways to improve your character's stats. As you go along, there will be more outfits that you can purchase and earn. They can be upgraded a few times and they essentially act as your character's level. The outfits have different buffs and stats, so some of this is going to come down to player choice and how you want your character to be. The next thing is that upgrading those outfits will net you with perk points. These can be used to give you additional benefits that no matter which outfit you are wearing, you'll have them. Then you have the momentum moves that you'll be unlocking through finding various items in the environment, crafting new buffs and attacks to use at different energy bar stages. There's plenty to play around here and enough to add some personalization for for what you're looking for. This is made even more interesting with the ability to play this in online co-op. Sadly, I did not have the opportunity to play this in co-op, but I can only imagine this being even better by allowing for more options and making the exploration even more fun with a buddy. I will note that based on my time with the game, I think it is balanced just fine for single player play. So at least so far, it doesn't feel like this was a co-op game made first and then a single player game made second. Story-wise, Atlas Fallen seems fine, interesting enough, and serviceable. What I do think does help the narrative, at least where I am, is with the relationship with your character that they have with a spirit in his gauntlet. It kind of reminds me of the relationship seen in Ghostwire Tokyo. Time will tell if this part of the game continues to get better, but even if the narrative continues to stay at this level, I am fine with it as long as it doesn't interfere with the gameplay, which so far it hasn't. And I know this might sound like an odd comment, but Atlas Fallen is not supposed to be an extremely long game. I have seen people beat this in 12 hours all the way up to 20. Honestly, I find this to be a good thing for the length of the game. I do love long and short titles, but lately in the AAA space, we have seen way too many titles that have poor pacing issues and do not know how to trim the fat to provide a better experience. So when I see a title that say is about 20 hours, I really like that. Plus with many big AAA games trying to provide all the gameplay, it's nice to see more mid-sized developers trying to provide more options for us players. Not everything needs to be a 50 hour plus game. Sometimes it's nice to have something that you can casually beat in a few weeks, or maybe marathoning on a long weekend. I really like this title so far. Again, it's nice to see us get something that is more like a throwback action adventure game. We need more of these within this space. I understand that the Souls genre is hot right now, and has been. I enjoy those games as well, but I miss stuff like this. More quality mid-tier games are needed. Even though the game just came out, I do think that based on the early critical and big YouTuber channel scores, that this title is a bit underrated. I think I might make a few more videos on this game. I like it, and I do think that it's one that you should keep an eye out for. Are you interested in Atlas Fallen? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you'd like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.